Hello, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar on EdReady. EdReady is an online math program that has been built to help students study for the NISA test. Right now it's just for the 11th grade NISA, but we're working on getting a 7th and 8th grade one created um, that also is aligned with our Nebraska NISA test. So what is EdReady? Here is what their little um, byline is. It lets you assess your readiness for college math, see study options, and get a personalized study path to fill in knowledge gaps. That's what EdReady was originally created for. Um, we have taken it though and we have aligned it to our NISA test and you can also use it for ACT prep and for the compass prep. And I will show you that when we get farther into it. EdReady is a product that is powered by NROC. NROC is an organization um, that puts really, really quality online um, courses together. And so the course that the NISA prep test has been created from was an NROC developmental math course. If you want to learn more about NROC, um, you can go to this website down here. Also know that um, everything in NROC, you might have heard of hippocampus, which is more um, on the high school level. A lot of it is collegiate. Um, it uh, is available to all of Nebraska teachers through the ESUCC pays for a membership that allows it to be free to Nebraska teachers. So this EdReady product that I'm going to show you is free for you to use with your students. I'm going to start with just a little short video um, that kind of talks about EdReady and it really focuses on that college and career readiness. Um, as it was developed for that purpose to see where kids are um, based on their readiness for college math. So we'll watch this quick. Look, we're all on different paths in life. And it's not always easy to find your way when thinking about college and career. There are so many possibilities. And for many of us, there are challenges that we have to overcome. Math can be a challenge that really gets in the way of our goals. Did you know that nearly half of recent high school graduates are considered not ready for college math? These students are often placed on a different track spending time and money taking classes that don't earn credit. Of those who start college unprepared, only 20% will successfully graduate with a degree. And far too many students end up wasting precious time and money while their dreams of earning a degree fade away. But that doesn't have to be your story. If you're making a decision about your future, the first step is edready.org. It's free, it helps you personally, and it can be used by anyone. With EdReady, you can clearly see your options and gain the skills that make sense for you. Here's how it works. First, select a goal to tell EdReady where you want to go. Next, take a short self-assessment to find out what you may already know. Your results are presented as an EdReady score showing what you should study and what you may be able to skip. Your EdReady score shows where you are right now in math. You can see how far this places you from the goal you chose, shown as a target score. With a clear idea of where you are and where you want to go, EdReady builds a study path to help you get there. Follow your study path to reveal free online resources for each topic. You choose which resources support how you learn best. When you think you've mastered a concept, check your knowledge. And watch your EdReady score improve. If you put in the time and use the resources provided, 
you can be ready for any goal you choose. EdReady gives you what you need to know to get you where you want to go. So, what do you want to be ready for? All right. I think that um, EdReady is an amazing product, and the teachers that I have showed it to um, agree. Last year, EdReady was in a pilot stage in the state of Nebraska, and we had a few different schools um, use it throughout the, the state, and it is ready to go this year. Um, and I'll tell you how to, how to go about doing that towards the end, but I would encourage all math teachers to um, take a look at it, and I think that you will find that it's, it would be a great addition to what you're already doing in your math classrooms. And towards the end of the webinar, I'll also talk about a few ways that teachers are using it, so it might give you some ideas. All right, actually, we'll come back to this. We're going to go out to the actual site and take a look at um, what it looks like. Now, the really, really important thing is that we go to the Nebraska domain site. If you just go to edready.org, you won't get access to the NISA test because it's not created there. It's created within our domain. So if you look up here, this esucc.edready.org, that's what you have to go to in order to get access to the Nebraska stuff. And I have the in some uh, information later. Um, two things. I can show you what it looks like as a teacher and as a student. And I think I'm going to start at the student level. Um, so we can kind of see. It's really great because students enroll themselves. Once the teacher decides um, what courses they want the students in, if it's the NISA or the ACT or the Compass, then they give the students a key code, which has been created, and then the students can um, log in themselves, basically. So I'm going to pull up my student account. And... Um, I will show you that um, since I already have account created, I'm going to go to the regular EdReady site, but I do not want you to go here at all. Um, but this is what a student would first do on the ESUCC site. They would go here and um, they would get want to get started and then they would have to sign up for an account so that they would use their school email account they would choose a password it could be something that they're familiar with um, and the reason you enter your zip code it is prepared and was made for college readiness so it will report to the students the colleges within so many miles of their zip code um, just kind of a more of a, a college awareness thing so I would sign up um, and I send this and then they receive an email that they have to click on to verify. It's that easy. Now, once they're in, I'm going to go back to the ESUCC site and I am here under my student account. Let me log out so you can see from the very beginning what a student. So they would get here under the ESUCC website and they would log in. And since they've created their account, it's just their email and their password and then they log in. So at this point they would enter a goal key and we'll learn more about goal keys later on but it's very very simple. The goal key that I entered for this practice test to show you was just NNNC underscore practice I believe and so then it appears here and you can enter several goals they can be working on the NISA one they could be working on the ACT prep one all at the same time and your goals would just show up here so this is my goal and um, let's see actually I um, went here yesterday and I already took the assessment I just had five question assessment 
so that you could I could show you what a study path looks like. <clears throat> As you've seen in the video, um, this was the score I got. So I am sitting at a 25. And I believe that this one is set that I would like to be at a 90%. That's my target. You can set that at whatever you'd like. Um, I believe the NISA one is set at 100 across the board um, just because we they need to uh, try and master everything in order to do well on that NISA. And so um, I obviously need to do some work to get to my 90. So I'm going to go to my study path. And it shows here under whole numbers, I wasn't ready. And the recommended study time for me to master this would be about three hours. And here, these are the topics under the whole number that I need to study, place value, rounding, comparing, um, adding whole numbers, subtracting, estimation. So I have a lot of work to do. And so we're just gonna click on this one and so you can see what the students then would go through. It takes just a minute to get it loaded. All right, every um, topic they have, they can go through a warm up. Um, there's a presentation, there's examples that are worked so they can watch them, they can practice, and then they can continue to review. So a little bit of the presentation, I already did the warm up. How much money would you rather make in a month? This amount or this amount? Of the two amounts, of course you'd rather make this amount. But why? Well, all numbers are made up of one or more digits. A digit what is I like about zero, these, it's very visual. One, they two, really three, um, connect four, it to real five, life six, examples, seven, eight, just like this one making money, how much you want to make. Um, and so I like that aspect of it. It's not Sally and Johnny are going in a rowboat, you know, how many miles will it take, whatever. It's very, very practical real life experiences. Okay, I'm gonna stop him. And then I'm gonna show you um, some of the work examples here. In 4,356. Now, whenever I think about place value, and the more you do practice problems on this, it'll become a, a little bit of second nature. But whenever I see a problem like this, I like to expand out what 4,300. Okay, I'm going to talk over him again, too. A lot of the content that they have pulled in um, to make these study paths come from Khan Academy, um, the NROC, um, maybe CK12. There's a listing. If I see that pop up, I will, will show it again. So they pull in content from a lot of different places. And if you notice here, they have the opportunity to watch him um, work three different problems. And so I'm going to stop that. And then I can go ahead and practice and see if I did better. Uh, it says match the value on the left with the numbers on the right. So five in the thousandths place. I would pull this over. And then it creates that, eight in the hundreds, three in the millions, two in the ten thousands, and seven in the hundred thousands. All right, and you see I have six problems here. I would submit that, I would go on, I'm correct. Let me show you one if I get it incorrect. So find the digit and the place value for each of these. In the billions, we'll go two, we'll do a seven. I'm not even reading, so a zero and a one. All right, and I submit it. It says incorrect. Keep in mind the position. So it kind of teaches you as you go. I can then retry um, and figure it out, or and they'll give me another chance to retry, and then I'll go on. and. I'll see in the long run that I haven't mastered the concept if that's the case, and I would go back and review some more. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my study path. So that's what it looks like on a student's end. Now a couple things. In the NISA um, course, it's been broken into three parts. Otherwise, the initial assessment was just so huge. And um, so they'll take an initial assessment it will decide what their study path needs to be based on that um, initial score, and then um, they can work through that. 
Now, the initial assessments say they don't get through it in the time period that you initially set up for them. It's okay. Everything is saved. You never have to push save. You can come back and get right back into your assessment where you were. Same thing with your study path. And the other thing about your study path is maybe I've been working on whole numbers and I'm just frustrated. Next day I can come and work on, um, I don't know, estimation maybe. So I can choose here which study path or where in my study path I want to work. So everything is saved automatically. It comes right back to them. Lots of great feedback as you saw. Um, and then even better feedback and reports for the teachers. And we'll get to that um, just shortly. When I get through my study paths, I can come back and redo the assessment. Um, and Or I can do like assessments after each unit or each little deal of study. And, and as I complete them, um, then I'll know I've mastered it. Otherwise, I can go back and take that whole five-question assessment to see if I've raised my score or I've got to my mastery targeted score. All right, that's a little bit on the student one. Um, pretty simple. I'm going to close that one and come back to the teacher one now. I'm going to log in. Now, you're going to see more here than you would see you would only see the school that you're associated, associated with, but um, I have a lot more schools, so you'll probably see way more than you would um, on, your, on your end. Okay. Now, for a teacher, you um, could go to the ESU Ed Ready site like I just was at here and do a get started, Oops, that's not the ESU CC one, and create an account. But I would prefer you not to. Um, I would prefer that you just let me know if you want an account. And all I need to know is your email um, address you want that account associated with, and I will set it up for you. That way I can assign you goals and permissions and those kind of things that you wouldn't get if you set up your own account. Um, it's just easier on my end. If you set up your own, I don't have the permissions to go in and give you what you need, your goals and those things. So then I have to go um, back to the EdRoc or EdReady, EnRoc help desk for them to do it. So just on my behalf, I would ask that you contact me, and my contact information will be at the end, and I will set that account up for you. And I just think I said, need to know an email, and then need to know what um, assessments you want access to. If it's the NISA prep one, if it's the ACT, or if it's the Compass one. All right, I'm going to go into the Nebraska one here. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to go. Um, and look here at uh, what reports would look like. So they're working, you can see here, they're working on that 6th, 7th, 8th grade prep one. We've got a pilot going on, um, and so hopefully that will be available for everyone really soon. Um, trying to see if I can find one where we're not going to see student names. Um, here's an example. Here's a Nebraska presentation example. And so this is probably actually educators that have gone in and, and done a practice test. So we'll go with that one and look at the reports for it. All right, on the initial page of reports, it will show how many students have taken the diagnostic test or the initial assessment and how many have worked and improved. So at this point, 34 have improved their score. The median diagnostic score was a 58. Uh, the most recent median was a 66 score. Um, so you can kind of see a little bit. Um, for the most part, the red is those that were not ready, yellow needs improvement, and the green is the mastered. So it gives just a little overall information. But what I like is then if I click here on student data, Let's hope these are our teachers. Um, yep, these are all teachers, so this is good. 
um, you can see here that in this class, these are the students. The gray is their initial assessment, and then the purple is their most recent updated assessment score. So obviously, this one, Amanda, hasn't been in at all. Um, here we see some growth and improvement from Amy, and she, you can see here, she has spent two hours and 49 minutes in her study path. And here we have the most growth from Angie Becker. What a student. She got that much growth and she didn't even study. Um, but so that's kind of what this will show you, just kind of basically showing the growth and the amount of time that they've been in it. So now I'm going to go drill down one more step. And I'm going to go to unit detail. And this is where the reports get exciting, I think. Got to let it finish loading. Well, should have my students over here. I'm not sure why. Let me refresh my page, maybe. There it comes, maybe. There. Okay, so um, in this NNC practice test, there was just two units. There's obviously a lot more if you were under the NISA or the other ones. Um, and we can see here that um, Billy Bob, most recent score was a 47. Yellow, he needs review. If I click on this, um, it's going to tell me oops, that this student has not yet studied any of the resources in there or here. So Billy Bob needs to get to work, obviously. And um, let's see, here's someone who the student hasn't studied there yet. Maybe no one studied on this one. Oh, here she has. So this is length, and this is the last thing she studied was unit six measurement. And if I can't remember what that was, I can click on it here, and it'll take me right out to that study path so I can see what was being taught. So as a teacher, if I see that a student um, has been working on something and not making much progress, this will take me right to how it's being taught and what's being covered in that um, uh, part of the the review and so then I can decide whether I need to supplement that or, or do something to help that student. Also we know that unit one is whole numbers, unit two is measurement so it kind of gives you an overview of what they've been studying and um, the green is they've mastered or the green with the star means that they they should be able to master it with very little or um, not a lot of time and they're very on the verge of having it mastered there. All right, so then I can drill down one more time to topic detail. And so in that unit one, I am not sure why those people's names are not loading on my first page. Could be I'm not patient enough, but here we are. The second page seems to load. Um, so in unit one on whole numbers here, or I could flip to unit two on measurement, um, we can see it's broken down even more. So the first topic is place value. And I can see here that Beth has mastered it. If I click on it, um, those are all the resources that she has studied. Um, she didn't study any in that one, so she didn't need to spend any time there. She's been working here on adding whole numbers and she hasn't mastered it yet though and I could view the resource and I could go right out to it if I if I wanted to see what she's been studying. Then I could look at rounding numbers and I could go down and see how they're doing with that um, and see here Callie's having trouble it does show that she's been working on it um, and so I just maybe want to monitor if she needs a little extra help. So I like really like the reports. And if I go back here to the summary report, 
I can email this whole data to myself. I can also download it for each individual or for an individual student and look at that. Um, so I really like that ability. So if you have a student that says they've been working in it and you know you can take this information, download it, show it says spent no time in it, um, you haven't gained anything, this is, you know, let's make a plan of action. It's that easy. It's really um, a teacher friendly product and a student friendly product. I'm going to pop out back to my PowerPoint here. Now, I said I would tell a couple ways that it's being used. Um, I know some schools use it like at the last 10 minutes of class, they have students work in their ed ready. I know if you are a one to one school, that maybe works better. Um, if you're not, maybe once a week you have the lab in or you take them to the lab that the kids work on their ed ready. Um, some schools where kids, they get to that junior year before they take the NISA and they haven't had math that particular year for that semester or depends on if you're in block scheduling. So they use this as kind of a review um, and prep of those skills. It doesn't have to just be juniors. I've got schools that have some sophomores taking it. Um, some schools have those kids that need to take math but are not um, students that need the higher level math. So they have developed um, what they call developmental math or something like that. And this is a great program to put in there. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can use it. It's so um, teacher friendly. You can use it when you need a sub. Just tell the sub it's ed ready day. Your kids know what to do. They get in, they log in, and they work through their study paths. Um, and then you can come back and you can see how much time they spend working in um, their paths that day. Excellent, excellent course. If you're doing a blended learning classroom, this fits in well. This can be your online component or, or piece. Um, and know that the, the NISA, like it's in three parts, but the ACT and the Compass, um, it's just set up basically the same way. It's not broke up into three parts, but they take initial assessment, they work through study paths, um, and then they can uh, check and see how well they've done to reach their target. Also, if they want to, they can take the college readiness. That one is not one that um, we assign a goal key to. They can just um, go, here I am saying this, to the regular edready.org site and uh, sign up as a guest and take the college readiness if, they're, if they want to see. But the college readiness is the same kind of questions that are built into um, the ACT and the Compass Prep and the NISA. So that's why we didn't, didn't put it in here. Now, when I sign you up or create you an account, I send out a document that has the t these next two slides on it. It'll tell for teachers. You go to this EdReady, ESUCC EdReady site. You log in. It's always going to be the email you send me, and I'll create oops, some sort of a password for you. And then when you log in the first time, you get to change that. And then it will have your goals here. So you see here, here's just some sample goals. Here's that NNNC practice one we were looking at. And then what I've circled here is the goal key. This is what you give the students. So once they've created their account, they go in and they want to enter a goal key, they would enter this NNNC underscore practice or whatever your goal key is. I usually, a lot of times, will use your mascot, Falcons, ACT 2015, or something like that. So it's not that difficult. And all kids use the same one. Um, and then you'll see them in your reports. Now, you won't see them in your reports till they've completed the assessment. So if they're only partway through the assessment, it won't show until they've completed that assessment and a study path has been um, prepared for the students. Also, if you have multiple teachers in your building wanting to use EdReady, that's a wonderful thing, they each are gonna want their own goal key because otherwise all the students will populate under that same goal. So you could have two teachers in the same building working on the NISA goal. They just have a different goal key that their kids put in. That way they can see their, their data um, just for their students. 
There is a hierarchy that if you have like a um, math department chair that would like to review all students and not necessarily by teacher, we can also set it up um, as a hierarchy that that person can then access all those reports and kind of merge them together. So that's something that's actually new. Then on this document that I send, there's also the student part directions. The students log into the ESUCC, they create their account, have them use an email and a familiar password. Um, I should probably add here, then they have to verify through their email um, that that and activate that account. Then they just type in the goal key. i just going to end my email here or my phone number. Um, if you would like an EdReady account set up for you, just let me know and I will do that immediately. Let me know what assessments you would like in that account. And then if you'd like me to come out and sit down with you and do a demonstration for your math department or your math teachers or just you think you're ready to go but you'd like a little one-on-one -on -one help, um, I'm happy to do that. You just have to, to let me know and we'll set something up. I encourage everyone to take a look at EdReady and um, I think that there has such value in it and that you could use it somewhere in your program.